My Taffer friends, which game is better, Thief 1 or Thief 2? Age-old question that still is heavily debated till today. These two games rank near the very top of my favorite games ever made. They're both like two slightly different gourmet steaks that are just slightly different. They both have their merits and their drawbacks, but they're just so good. You might be going back and forth over time of which game you prefer. But let's break it down. To do so, we're going to do a level by level breakdown of the game, do a little quick little analysis about that, the overall pace that these levels provide for each game, we'll look a bit at the story, and then make a conclusion of which game is better. So my taffers, let's jump in. Lord Bafford's Manor. Not only do I think this is a fantastic level to begin Thief, it's one of my favorite first levels in any game. How could you not love a first level that starts off this conversation with the bear pits? <coughs> Couldn't pay me enough. What? You soft belly. The bears have got these new muzzles with underslung cheek spikes. Last time I was there, there was a real eye gouge. <laughs> or even the drunkard. <laughs> Could you possibly be any more helpful? We get this sprawling, maze-like level that's still fairly easy to follow, and while a little tougher first level, it still gives you the idea of what to expect and does a great job of easing you in. The sprawling maze-like nature that Thief 1 really makes use of that Thief 2 doesn't quite make use of is both its greatest strengths and its greatest weaknesses. Now let's go more into detail about that, but one of my favorite first levels to any game. As much as I enjoyed the first level, the second level here is where I really fell in love with the game the first time around. But this level does introduce the controversial factors that pop up in the discussion between Thief 1 and Thief 2, and that is the supernatural factors, and here we are introduced to the zombies. I'm going to discuss more of the zombies later because here, just run past them. This is our introduction to the Hamrites, and I really love how the game makes use of their dialogue to both give us an indication if they're aware of us, but also do some world building about the Hamrites themselves. Really awesome stuff here. One thing the Thief games don't get enough credit for is the changing objectives during a mission. So many games will give you objectives to do that don't change at all whatsoever throughout the mission. But here we get a lot of twists and turns, a lot of buts and therefores. This level, once you get to the prison itself, this level is a little more condensed than previously, but it is still quite sprawling and maze-like in its nature. Another great level, great way to start off the game. The Boneheart can be a controversial level amongst Taffers. I myself love its atmosphere that's unmatched and nothing in Thief 2 comes close to it. We're dealing with no humans, no guards this time around. It's all supernatural, it's all undead, it's all zombies. Something that Thief 1 makes use of that Thief 2 doesn't really do is having the build up to getting to where we're going. What I mean by that is here we start off on the surface and have to make our way down. As opposed to a lot of levels in Thief 2, we're kind of just dropped off where we need to go and then go right in. Now that buildup is great of building that atmosphere, but again with the sprawling and maze-like nature of Thief 1, it could also be its greatest weakness. And here, it could be a bit frustrating even after multiple playthroughs, remember just how to get down to the bottom and to the crypts. It's easy to get lost and turned around. And even the crypts themselves they are. But again, that atmosphere is just dripping that gets lost when the sequel got rid of these supernatural elements for the most part. And what Taffer doesn't have the Horn of Quintus ingrained in their head? That little melody. The upcoming game Gloomwood, which if you have not checked out, you should check out the demo, and hey, I've done a video on it here. It definitely takes a lot of influence from the Bone Horde. I could see months discussions amongst Taffers that there could be a bit of controversy if it's a good mission or not, but I think we can all agree the atmosphere is just pretty much unmatched. Assassins, both a great level and an okay level. I do like the introduction of these assassins coming after you, but not getting you, not checking your body, just leaving it, okay. And you get to tail the assassins. Now it's nice to walk through the city, but tailing's never really been fun in games, whether it's here, Assassin's Creed, Grand Theft Autos, LA Noir, whatever games really make use of it, it's not really fun. You follow the distance, hide in the shadows and wait, and move, and repeat. 
it's not that exciting. That said, afterwards, breaking into this manor and robbing Ramirez is ah, chef's kits. Oh, Ramirez. Ramirez, get over and kill an SOB! All I really have to say about the Thieves Guild is control, shift, alt, end. You're welcome. The sword. Is it the best level in the entire series? It very well might be, and just one of the best design levels I've ever come across. What seems like a fairly standard mission to begin with, of going in to steal something in this manner, turns into really weird as you keep making your way further in. It really throws you for a loop and you're wondering what's going on here, and yet it's not overly confusing and easy to get turned around, which I appreciate that how they were able to pull this off. This is the sprawling maze-like design of Thief 1 that Thief 2 scaled back on, and this is it at its very best. And also just says so much about this character that we're stealing this from? Who is this individual who built a place like this? What do the guards think about this kind of place? I wonder how much money they're making to keep their mouth shut about it. Next up is the Haunted Cathedral, another great level. It does have the issue that it can be fairly easy to get lost with the sprawling maze-like nature, especially at the beginning. Again, as I mentioned, it's nice that we don't get dropped off right in front of the cathedral, but have to make our way to it. And the atmosphere is just dripping. Again, we don't have any humans to deal with, we deal with various creatures and undead. And Thief 2 did lose quite a bit by taking these things out, but more on that later. I do find it a bit of a step down compared to the previous levels, but it is still an extremely strong level. And though it can be quite easy to get lost, I do appreciate how the game makes you figure your own way out instead of putting down objective markers like they would do today. Oh, who am I kidding? They would never make a sprawling level like this today. Mage's Guild, which is a, another addition from gold from the original Dark Project. I don't really have much to say on this one. It's just kind of there. Control, shift, alt, end. Lost City, both the great, but also a frustrating level. Definitely has more of that Tomb Raider feel to it, and that's pretty cool. Now, the development of Thief went through a few iterations. I wouldn't be surprised if this came from a previous iteration that was more focused on other things before it became a stealth game. But here's where the sprawling and maze-like nature can detract from the game when it could be a little too much sometimes, I find, and it could just be frustrating and more of an annoyance. Thief 2 would scale back on this and make more tightly designed levels, for better or for worse. When it works here, of the sprawling nature and maze-like structures that like the sword have or the bone horde has, it works well. But here, it while still a great level, it does feel a little bit frustrating. Song of the Caverns, which was the third and final addition to Thief Gold, as it was not in the original Dark Project. Fantastic level, one of the best in the series. Again, it starts off some simple objectives. We get some butt therefore, where this individual's dead, so we navigate in further, and then we end up at the Opera House. At this point, you're well familiar with the game and everything it offers to you, and it cranks up that difficulty, but still makes it manageable. There's so much to see and hear and do here, and things to steal, conversations to listen in on. One of the best levels in the entire series. I'd put it just behind the sword on that front in regards to the first game. Undercover is a cool little level. It's much more tightly packed and feels more like a level out of Thief 2. We get more insight into the Hammerites, which is always really interesting. There's always that tense feeling if you're going to be discovered or not. Return to Cathedral, now we get to go into the Cathedral this time. All these undead enemies are utterly terrifying and the atmosphere is just, my goodness. That said, we get into fetch questing in this level and it gets really annoying. And that's too bad because it's a very well designed level and the maze like structure works well here, but the whole fetch quest aspect of it really pulls back on it, which is unfortunate. Escape. Again, great atmosphere and interesting mix of enemies, but a very frustrating level. 
not one I like to replay if I'm going through the game again as I did recently. <laughs> don't feel bad about replaying this, doing the control shift alt end, because this last stretch of the game here is, well, it's definitely a step down. Now, don't get me wrong, I'd rather play these lesser levels than 95% of other games, but they are a noticeable step down than what comes from the first half of the game. A strange bedfellows, my least favorite mission. Ugh. It's not too exciting. Again, don't feel bad with the control shift alt end. The final level, the Maw, well, it is very linear and straightforward. I do quite like this level, and it's interesting as a final level. There's a lot of cool stuff going on here, and again, that atmosphere is fantastic. Pain, burning heat, fences, charred, lazy sheet, black and tar, man flesh, meat, melting ears, dance and leap, and chasing your death cat. And that wraps up the levels of Thief Gold. Overall, if you cut out the Thieves Guild, which is easy to do with Control Shift Alt N, you have one of the strongest starts to any game all the way up to the sword. Those first few missions, you get a nice variety of dealing with humans, dealing with undead and the supernatural. The game does take a bit of a stumble with the Mages Guild and the Lost City, and don't get me wrong, I do enjoy Lost City, but the sprawling maze-like nature does work against Against it here. Game more than makes up for it with the Song of the Cavern. Undercover is a pretty good, not outstanding level, but a lot of fun that's nice, nice and tight. More something like out of Thief 2. Return the Cathedral has some great atmosphere, some of the best in this series, but gets annoying with the fetch quests. Escape and Strange Bedfellows are utter dregs, and the Maw is a good, not great, but an interesting way to end off the game. So overall has an extremely strong first half that does take a stumble, gets back up again with Song of the Cavern, and then the end is kind of, eh, they're okay. Again, don't get me wrong, I'd rather play these missions than 95% of other games, but compared to what comes the first half of the game, it is a bit of a disappointment. In a way, it's like Dark Souls, where that first half is so, so strong. And it does take a stumble in that second half, with some exceptions here and there. With that, my Taffer friends, let's move on to Thief 2, The Metal Age. Firstly, we have Running Interference, and it's apparent right away we're definitely going more of a tighter design. The levels aren't as sprawling and maze-like as they were in Thief 1, for better or for worse. In Thief 1, when it hits the mark with the sprawling design, it hits it out of the park, but when it doesn't, it greatly detracts from it. This is a good level, there's nothing like outstanding to say about it, but it is a nice way to introduce the game to us, though as an introduction level, it is a noticeable step down from Thief 1. Shipping and Receiving. This is a level I find pretty good, not great. More of the middle of the pack, I would say. We get more of our introduction to the mechanists and a lot of great world building here, lots of areas to explore, but again, it's much more tightly packed and easy to make your way around. The third level frame, my Taffer friends, I feel is one of the best in the series. Lots of cool, interesting things here to sneak around, lots of interesting secrets, great atmosphere. This is where the game to me really starts to pick up. And this is where we first encounter some security cameras and some interesting inventions from the mechanists and our first mention of our good friend Karis, which we will learn about later. Ambush is a pretty good level, nothing great. It is nice to be able to explore the city here without having to tail anyone. It is nice to go back to your place. Fun little mission, although nothing outstanding. Eavesdropping from a lore standpoint and world building standpoint is a really cool level as we get introduced to the robots, the children of the Mechanists, and through that we get to hear Karis for the first time, both through them and through Karis himself. With his voice thus preserved, sure it dare not be. Hear the words of Karis. As a level, it's quite enjoyable. It's not a fantastic level, but does a lot of really interesting things with the lore and world building. First City Bank and Trust. Ah, uh, to have a mission in Thief where we get to rob a bank. This is what thieving is all about. This is a classic level, a top fiver for me overall in the entire series. You could definitely see the influence a level like this had on the bank level in Chaos Theory from Splinter Cell, which is another fantastic raiding the bank mission. 
to note, another big difference between Thief 1 and Thief 2 is in Thief 2, you definitely feel more like a thief. While Thief 1, we had more of that mission variety with the undead and the supernatural. Thief 2 scales it back to more focusing on steal from the rich. Blackmail is another one of my favorite levels in Thief 2 and the series overall, and we get that really interesting twist where here we are going to try and blackmail this guy, and oh well, he's dead, and that definitely changes things up. And now people are aware that someone's in here, even though it wasn't us. Again, I love these little wrenches that they throw in their plan here when it comes to the mission design, that mission objectives just don't stay the same way the entire time, which a lot of games don't really seem to do. Tracing the courier, uh, tailing people is just not fun. Kinda wish they learned their lesson from the first game of not putting this in, cause it's not fun. What's next is Trail of Blood, and in regards to atmosphere, it comes closest to Thief 1 in dealing here with the ghosts and the pagans and these creatures. You can have this. I don't need it anymore. Come, Lily. Must we go? His name's Dewdrop, and he doesn't like sweetness. Lily. I have to go now. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that Thief 2 has a bad atmosphere. The atmosphere is still fantastic, but removing the supernatural aspects and the zombies and levels like Bone Horde did take away a lot of that atmosphere that the first one was oozing in. That said, this level does a really great job of building that atmosphere and that sense of dread. Life of the Party. Ah, what has not been said about Life of the Party? The mission that's inspired a thousand different fan missions. It has everything you love about Thief. This one pulls more from Thief 1 as starting us away from where we need to go. And it's just really fun to just jump around the rooftops here and really feel like a thief and break into these areas. And of course, listening to this guard conversation. They're even simping back that, my taffer friends. Not need inbred page boy such as yourself. Our good master Willy wouldn't be caught near that frumpy little trollop unless he were holding her back at the end of a halberd! How dare you defile the name of someone so good and virtuous as the Lady Van Vernon! The second half of breaking in of where we need to go, the floors, all there is to do, all these cool enemies. Amazing, amazing stuff. I go back and forth if I like this better than the sword, and oh, they're just both ah. But yes, one of the best levels ever in any game. I trust you will enjoy this piece presented by the servants I have given you. Imagine a short while ago. Precious Cargo, good level. Yeah, the, the submarine's pretty cool. Yeah, this one's this one's like to me a good, not a great, great level or anything. To note, Thief 2 is much more consistent. Beyond Life of the Party, there's not as many highs, but there's not as many lows that happen in Thief 1. It is more consistent overall. Kidnap, it is nice to revisit the Lost City and have it a little more straightforward, but this one could be frustrating with trying to find the target you're after. Although I did get lucky with my last playthrough of it, but eh, not much to say about here, I'd say. Casing the joint and masks. Now, it still boggles my mind that these were never just one level to begin with. Perhaps Looking Glass made them two separate levels to meet a publisher demand, I do not know. I do love the design of the level, the atmosphere is great, but this really should have been one level. The atmosphere of Thief 1 pops up a lot here in the library with the ghosts. This is some great stuff. Sabotage at Soulforge, our final level in Thief 2, and uh, I find this one pretty boring to be honest. It's a little fetch questy, a little too long, and doesn't really feel like a great conclusion of the game. Don't get me wrong, it's still good level, but just everything that came before, eh, it's, it's alright. So overall here with the level flow of Thief 2, starts quite good, nothing great compared to the original, although framed as a phenomenal level, 
Still a bunch of good levels. It picks up at the first city bank. We take a bit of a dip with Trace and the Courier, but then we get the back-to-back -back delight of Trail of Blood and Life of the Party. Ah, beautiful. The last stretch of the game by no means is bad, but it is good, but nothing outstanding compared to more of the higher highs that we just had. Casing the joint and mass definitely feels a lot of missed potential. I would have loved to see them get the chance to make Thief 2 gold, probably make this one level. To note as well, Looking Glass Studios unfortunately went under before they were able to make Thief 2 gold, as Thief Gold added three missions to the original, two of them not so great, one of them phenomenal. I would be curious to see what they would have done with Thief 2 gold. But my Taffer friends, unfortunately that never happened. Overall, which game is better in regards to levels? Well, that really depends what you're looking for. Thief 1 has one of the strongest first halves to any game I've ever played. A lot of ways feels like Dark Souls on that front. Does take a bit of a stumble in the middle, some good levels, some bad levels, and kind of peters off at the end, but still really enjoyable. Thief 1 is much more sprawling and maze-like in its nature of its levels, and when that works well, it hits it out of the park, especially missions like Bone Horde, or the sword. As unfortunately though, also this maze-like nature can get in its way. For example, missions like Escape or The Lost City, while interesting and have great atmosphere, can be frustrating. And Thief 1 by far has the better atmosphere. By taking out the supernatural aspects of Thief 1, Thief 2 definitely lacks more in the atmosphere department. Again, don't get me wrong, the game still drips and oozes in atmosphere, but nothing compared to the original. On the note of the sprawling and more maze-like nature of Thief 1, Thief 2 is definitely much more condensed and tightly packed, and as a result, there's definitely much more of a consistency across all missions. Now, there isn't as much variety in the missions as they scaled back on the supernatural aspects that Thief 1 did, so though while Life of the Party is fantastic, the higher highs don't quite have the highs that Thief 1 do, but as a result, the lower lows aren't quite like Thief 1. So overall, it comes down to, my Taffer friends, what you look more for. If you prefer the more atmospheric levels that have more frustrating aspects that aren't in the sequel, you'll like Thief 1 better. If you're more about tighter level design, more feeling like a quote-unquote thief, and didn't really care for the supernatural elements, Thief 2 will be up your alley. But for myself, as of recording on this day, I will give Thief 1 the slight edge. Again, these two are some of the best games ever made, but I am going to give a slight, slight edge to Thief 1. To note, when it came to development of Thief 2, they listened to the fan feedback about the supernatural and undead levels, and maybe took that too far in places. I may have gone too far in a few places. While those frustrations were mostly removed, it did remove a lot of that atmosphere that makes Thief 1 to me the better game. In a way, it reminds me of Mass Effect 1 versus Mass Effect 2, where some of the complaints about planet exploration in Mass Effect 1, they just removed altogether. But as a result, it took away some of that charm and exploration feel that Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 did not have. Thief 1 has a lot more enemy variety, especially since we have more creatures and undead and supernatural to deal with. On that note, it is a little more difficult with these kind of enemies to know if you've been spotted with the sounds they're making. Sometimes it's not overly clear compared to guards. Thief 2 had much less enemy variety. We had the children, the mechanists, and we had guards. Now the security cameras and these robots are really cool, interesting additions but they would like to see more variety in Thief 2. If Thief 1 had more variety, even if there were some frustrations in how some of the enemies were designed. In regards to the overall story, both stories are great. I love the way they've built these worlds. Of course, who could forget those great cutscenes? Reading all the materials left around and books and notes really does a great job for world building, listening to guards, and the Children of Mechanist does such a great job of world building or listening to the pagans. Fantastic stuff. So for which one has the better story? Well, I think it is more down to who do you prefer as for the villain, having Constantine the Trickster in Thief 1, or Karis and the Mechanist in Thief 2. I'm going to give the slight edge to Thief 2 here because we have an established villain much sooner in the story. Thief 1 is definitely more a MacGuffin hunt, and don't get me wrong, Constantine's still a great villain and the twist is great, but sometimes I wish he was introduced a little sooner into the story. Thief 2 introduced the Mechanist and Karis much sooner into the story, and they somehow pulled off an annoying voice without it becoming grating with Karis. I trust you will enjoy this piece presented by the servants I have given you. Imagine a short while ago these... 
Anyways, my Taffer friends, the Flying and Thief 2 are essential gaming experiences. They are both the finest of gourmet steaks. They're slightly different. And depending on the day, you might feel one's better than the other. But really sitting down and replaying these games and going through the levels, feeling about the atmosphere, the stories, I do give the slight, slight edge to Thief 1. But who knows, that could always change. Maybe some days I'm feeling more in a mood of just Thief, and Thief 2 takes the reign. So my Taffer friends, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear in the comments what you feel about your choice as the better game, what your favorite missions are. Maybe even talk about fan missions as well. That's something I need to start looking into more now, because I haven't really done much with the fan missions. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, comment, you know the whole shebang. Anyways, my Taffer friends, I gotta go punch some boulders. Boulder punch out.